Welcome to the Fly King Fisher Winning Post. I'm Mohit Lalvani, bringing you all the best horse racing action from India and around the world. We have a big one in store for you. It is the Radio Mirchi Indian 1000 Guineas, the first Indian classic. Let's head straight over to Mahalakshmi Racecourse for all the action. The high octane Mumbai season got an impetus on Sunday last with the running of the season's first classic, the Radio Mirchi Indian 1000 Guineas, a grade one race for three-year-old fillies. For the FM radio leaders, this was the first association with the Royal Western India Turf Club and Radio Mirchi became the first FM station to associate itself as a sponsor of the Indian Classic. Fifteen fillies were in the fray and the race wore a very open look with no firm favourite in place. Smashing was confirmed the prime fancy status and was quoted at just under 3 to 1. The paddock looked a busy place as the connections assembled to see the jockeys mount for the big one and amongst these Alma Mater, unbeaten in two races, looked fit and impressive. She was calm and poised and her mock race success over the highly rated Picasso had stripped her fitter. Black Magic Woman looked confident after a bold victory over Forest Flair. Although that win came over a sprint, Black Magic Woman had covered a lot of ground to beat the classy sprinter and that had the connections optimistic and hoping that she would prolong her dash until required. Botswana's last trend challenge was nullified by St. Katz who was also in the fray. Botswana was bouncing on her feet and her looks were also pleasing to the eye. She looked resourceful and strong enough to go the distance despite the fact that she had never gone over the mile. Smashing showed a good coat and indicated that all was well with her. Her blazing speed was amply evident in Pune and most believed that she would sustain the brilliance over the extra distance required. This was, like many others in the lineup, her first attempt over the mile. Hills and Stars was at nourishing odds and despite coming into this classic without a prep under her belt, could not be ignored. She was the only grade 1 winner in this field and though admittedly she looked like a filly who would require further, she looked a touch light but that was no worry as she's built that way. Victoria had left a trail of triumph, picking up races at will, four of them in a row. This was some showing indeed and what was standing out was her last victory over a mile and she clocked a smart timing of a little over a minute and 37 seconds. If she could better that, she was very much in the game. They're all in. And they're off and racing for the grade one. Radio Mirchi Indian 1000 guineas to a lovely even start by all the 15 fillies and as they settle down to race class apart taking advantage of the inside draw hits the front about two lengths in front of Indomitable in second position. Rebecca in the white cap is racing third. Very close behind is Black Magic Woman towards the inside rails. In the middle there is Votoria. On the further wide outside there is Queen's Kiss with St. Cat's keeping company. A length for the back there is Lake Paradise in the middle haunting fantasy with them. Very close behind is Romantic towards the inside rails. On the outside Cape Riol then comes Smashing. A length for the back there is Hills and Stars second last last of all Alma Mater. The racing past the 1000 meter marker now with class apart calling the shots about two lengths in front of Indomitable in second position. Another two lengths for the back there is Rebecca in third then comes Black Magic Woman. Victoria in the middle on the outside there Saint Cats making steady progress along with Queen's Kiss in the center. On the outside is Smashing also being prominent on the outside. Botswana is bunched up in the middle towards the inside there is Haunting Fantasy Romantic then there is Hills and Stars and Alma Mata as they straighten up for home. With about 400 meters about to run, Class Apart is all alone in front, about three and a half lengths in front of Rebecca getting a bit closer. Then comes Black Magic Woman towards the inside base, looking for room. There is uh, Botswana, then there's Victoria on the outside base, smashing pretty well on the outside. Then there is the uh, Hills and Stars coming up into the picture now and Alma Meta devouring round on the outside with about 200 meters about to run and it's Alma Meta travelling well. He's about half a length in front of Black Magic Woman and Botswana. Alma Meta and Botswana but it's Alma Meta who wins it from Botswana. Then comes Hills and Stars as they race past the pit.
absolutely great. It's many, many years since I've won it and it feels fantastic. You know, she was traveling well and my other one was traveling even better at that stage, but she kicked on and the other one didn't. Absolutely and after a long time. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to sit off the pace and follow good horses in front like Hill and Stars and Smashing. And you're right in front of me. Well, the way she was settled behind, I know that she's going to spurt well. So, I had all chances to win this race. There were expressive emotions and heartaches as the drama unfolded the way it did. Alma Mater had run an aggressive race. In the replay, one noticed that Alma Mater was the last one to turn for home and her awesome effort in beating all on the way was sensational. Botswana would rue the fact that she did not get an opening earlier. Black Magic Woman would wonder if she had opened up too early, but the one to feel the real pinch would be Hills and Stars. She was perhaps the most unfortunate to have encountered some serious traffic concerns. She finished on beautifully though and showed promise for the Phillies Derby in five weeks time. Alma Mehta was led in by Mr. Sham Ruya and his son Ame, Mr. Pradeep Kumar Singhania and Mr. Surud Javeri. It was a double for Ruya as the filly was bred at his farm. For Prakash, his call to ride Alma Mehta instead of Botswana showed what makes him one of the top jockeys in India. And for the trainer P.C. Shroff, genius would be an understatement as he won yet another classic and that too with a 1-2 knockout punch. Well, and tremendous pictures out there. Alma Mater comes home. And what an interesting Indian Oaks it's going to be just in five weeks from now. We'll take a short break. We'll come back. There's plenty more, including a look ahead at the Casino Royale Indian 2000 Guineas. We'll bring you that and lots more. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Fly King Fisher winning post and moving right along, it's time to get to know our racing pro. Choosing a profession in this multi-dimensional world can be a tough task, particularly for a young beginner. However, when the mind is made up early, age notwithstanding, then one can ride one's passion and make a profession of it as well. Once a story was scripted in the Patel household, the lad P. Trevor, profession a jockey. I'm Jockey Peter and this is my story. How early was Trevor's introduction to horses? When I was a five years old, I started riding in an amateur riding club in Pune. And from there I started improving slowly, slowly, from the riding school, jumping and everything started. Trevor on his early days. I'm 19 years old. My school days went good, but I was more likely to become a jockey. I'm very much happy. This was actually my dream to come in this profession. And uh, I'm very much happy that my dream is fulfilled and I'm doing well. Did you get enough encouragement? Uh, my father supported me a lot uh, from the beginning. He helped me a lot, he did everything for me. I think so, no one does for anyone else, but everything he did for me. How did it all begin? First professional ride was Highland Flame. That was two years back and I ran third. And then after that, after one month I got my first winner, King Stroop. And so after I get started getting more rides, good rides and started winning after that. Did his first success come on a strong fancy? No, we did not expect it he'll win. But I came and bet the favourite. That was my first winner. And that, that was my happiest moment of my life. One of the best. What followed the first success? When I won my first race, from that time I got a little bit confidence, started me getting confidence on the horses, from where to move, what to do, on which track. I started getting that. And so after learning from the big jockeys, senior jockeys, and the foreigner top jockeys coming to India. Started learning from them little, little. And so after that, started improving. Does he have any special moments with a particular horse? Uh, Native Knight. That was uh, my, one of the best ride, CN Wadia Gold Cup. And uh, it was a maiden horse, one with me. 
no other rider had won with that horse and uh, all the top riders rode him but the uh, Mr. Narendra Lagarde gave me a chance he told me how to ride and we discussed about that before the race and how to ride what to do and that technique came to mind which is Trevor's favorite racetrack Bombay even you miss the kick or some, anything you have a very long straight to recover it and uh, it's a very big straight big course beautiful course beautiful surrounding and everything the best course and why Pune track is such that if you get an opportunity or gap or something you have to grab it if you don't do it you might lose a race or something Bombay track is such that you can sit for a long you can settle at the horse as much as you can you get two three chances you can come out you can come from in it's a very huge and big track and it's very comfortable track which i think is my favorite track how does steve prepare for his ride before the races i've study actually which horse will stop where and what distance he is so it supports me a lot so whenever i study i see the horses distance pedigree and everything who rode how he rode and watch is the video it supports me a lot What does it give importance to before a race? Morning work is very important actually. You know, you, you get to know the horse, how the horse is working, how fit he is. Every horse needs a different strategy, different style of riding, different position you need, when to spurt, how much dash he has. So every each and every horse you need a different technique. Does he have an idol? Favorite jockey, it's Richard Hughes. He's as tall as me, like me. He's riding beautifully, goes flight out, and he's my one of the favorite dogs. At 19, he surely must be enjoying a healthy night life. No, I don't go much out for this for that nothing. No out much. Movie some cup sometimes, movie or dinner, but no disco, nothing, not much. Any romantic angles yet? I have no girlfriends actually. <laughs> actually, my <laughs> racing is like everything. So I'm more interested in focused in the racing more than the. Other outside yet. How is Trevor taking his quick success? I had a good success so far. I had many winners, good winners. I'm doing well. So for the future, just want to keep on going like this, and uh, I have to learn. I have to build up my confidence and everything, which will improve you by race by race. And I have to learn from the international jockeys which comes to Bombay season. Learn from them and grab it whatever you get it. and in racing you never stop learning you keep on learning each and every day so which even i should learn every each and every day and which is better for my future does ever have any specific ambition every single jockey has a dream to win a indian derby and i hope i can do it i can win the indian derby well and trevor a young lad with plenty of promise he just might be a kingfisher trail blazer in the future like some of these The Great 2 Bangalore 2000 Guineas run on a day before the Indian 1000 Guineas had no surprises as Field Marshal the firm favorite shook off Maddox the only challenger without much fuss. Trainer S Padmanabhan had kept his charge at his peak and the way he thundered to victory delighted his connections and his large number of followers alike. He looked fit as a fiddle in the paddock and towered over the rest. Start his orders and off they go for the Bangalore 2000 Guineas Grade Two, losing about five six lengths as the start was held the Euro. And as they settle down to race, Field Marshal in the centre, taking it up there from Casanova, Waikato in the centre. Maddox is up on the outside. Then the Zones Empire, Lad's ability on the inner rails is Star Marcus. Then there is uh, Red Bishop. Upon the outside, there's Zone Empire, and about two three lengths away, there's Held the Euro as they go towards the 1200 meter marker. Field Marshal is the leader from Casanova. Maddox comes in next. Upon the outside, there's Mountain Ridge. Then there's the Lad's ability, followed by Own Empire. Then there's Hill Dioro, followed by Star Marcus, Waikato, and trailing the field about three lengths away. There's Red Bishop. And as they go towards the 800 meter marker, it's Field Marshal in a start to finish mission by about a length and a half from Maddox running second. Upon the inside rails, Casanova. Then there's Lad's ability. Star Marcus Mountain Range on the outside then there's Own Empire Waikato and about 5 6 length behind there is Red Bishop as they start negotiating the curve at the 600 meter marker 
And as they enter into the straight field, Marshall about two and a half lengths from Maddox, then there's Casanova, then comes on the outside, Ladsability, followed by star markers Hill Dioro, Waikato, and the other runners. Inside the last 400 meter marker, Field Marshall still ahead by about two and a half lengths from Maddox. And here comes on the outside Hill Dioro, then there's Casanova, followed by star markers. Then there is Ladsability, Waikato, Red Bishop, and the other runners. But inside the last 200, and looks like Martin Doyle is going to pull it off on Field Marshall. Ahead by about two and a half lengths from Maddox, then there's Hill Dioro, followed by star markers. But as they go for the wire now, Field Marshall lifting off the Bangalore 2000 Guineas Grade 2 in great style from Maddox. Star markers, Hill Dioro, Waikato, Casanova, Ladsability, Red Bishop, Own Empire, and Mountain Range. <laughs> The action at Hyderabad Racecourse 2 was similar to the one in Bangalore and firm favourite Pedalo treated his super large followers with a lively performance. Asked to get into position early, he showed that he was truly a Kingfisher trained blazer. Just about two lengths further back there is Vijay Shaurya. Another length and a three quarters further back there is Castro on the inside there. A length and a quarter away is the favourite Pedalo. Second last there is the Swiss Dawn and last of all Golden Rule. Back to the leader, Sunday Storm, just about a length in front of uh, Secret Burden in the middle. Towards the inside deals is Ridgeway. A gap about two lengths for the back there is Vijay Shaurya now being tracked on the outside by Padalo. Towards the inside rails there is Castro, then comes Swiston along with Golden Rule. As they come past the 800 meter marker now, it's Sunday Storm and Ridgeway. These two are pulled away about five lengths in front of Vijay Shaurya. Then comes Pedalo making a quick forward move on the outside. A length and a half further back there is Swiss Dawn also making a forward move along with Golden Rule as they begin to negotiate the home turn. Into the straight they come Ridgeway towards the inside rail. Sunday Storm on the outside. These two are still about three lengths in front of Pedalo moving up nicely on the outside. Then there's Vijay Shaurya. A length and a half, two lengths further back there is Swiss Dawn with about 300 meters more to run. And Pedalo comes to the fore. Pedalo about half a length in front of Vijay Shaurya. Then comes Sunday Storm is dropping back. Then so too is Ridgeway with about 150 meters more to run there. And Pedalo is accelerating well. A length and a half, two lengths in front of Golden Rule coming up fast on the outside but it's way too late. It's Pedalo. Pedalo all the way. Pedalo wins this one from Golden Rule, finishing up second. Then the Vijay Shaudia followed by Fusis Ruan and the rest as the race past the finish. But it's time for a short break here on the Fly King for Show Winning Post. The big one this weekend is the Casino Royale Indian 2000 Guineas. Let's take a look when we come back from our break as to who our top contenders are. Welcome back to the Fly King Fisher winning post. The Indian 2000 Guineas is the first leg of the Indian Triple Crown. And well, we've got a tough field ahead of us. Let's take a look at the top runners and riders and how they did during their workouts in the morning. The final spurts before the Casino Royale Indian 2000 Guineas were keenly awaited and the first to show out during the week was Knighton. Knighton cantered easily after a grass gallop on Monday. He was moving nicely enough even though he showed that his long raking strides would probably be better suited for the Indian Derby distance. Pronto Pronto was another one who travelled easily even as he was looking to regain the fitness that won him the Kingfisher Bangalore Derby over the summer. Cardinal was ridden by B. Prakash who asked the son of Placible to spurt at a steady pace. Cardinal worked with Bretton Woods and left his companion a long way behind. He clocked a minute and 16 seconds for the 1200 meter journey, winding up the last 600 in 40 seconds. Speed 6 from Bangalore demonstrated that he was speaking at the right time and his effortless work put him on target for this race as a challenger from the south. His stable companion Picasso had Frenchman Pasquier in the saddle and worked brilliantly finishing four lengths ahead of the useful Sergeant Pepper. The chestnut travelled on the outside of his companion and clocked 1 minute and 18 seconds sprinting home the last 600 meters in an impressive 38 seconds. The Indian 2000 Guineas dates back to 1943 
and now in the day of modern racing, Casino Royale, India's largest and most impressive gaming ship, has been the title sponsor for three years in a row. This was the first jewel of the Indian Triple Crown, just as Casino Royale is a jewel in Goa for those seeking glittering entertainment and world-class hospitality. With plenty at stake for the connections of the runners, tipping team was seen around, skulking amongst owners and professionals, keeping his ear firmly to the ground. Pronto Pronto has done everything asked of. He's won the Bangalore 2000 guineas, Bangalore Colts trial and the Bangalore derby. He's had a long layoff. I spelled him in Pune, I didn't race him. He's had a recent mock race. He runs with a chance, as much as chance as anybody else has. Well, uh, it's only that Pronto, Pronto is not run for a while. He's, um, he's had a longish break of over five months now and uh, he's had a mock race to help him prepare for this race. Uh, but it's still uh, a, a fighting race. Uh, a lot of the other uh, colts seem to have come up and um, Pacey's uh, uh, Picasso and uh, Cardinals uh, seem to have uh, really matured well and blossomed well for this race. You also have uh, Speed 6 who's come from Bangalore. So it's going to be an interesting race. I think he's very well. He's been gelded after his last run. But um, because he was a bit boisterous in the, the Pune Derby, but I think he's come out quite well. He's working very well. It's cardinal, I think that that's the horse really everyone has to beat in this race. I would say it should be with uh, Cardinal, uh, Picasso, and Pronto. Pronto. I think these are the three main contenders in the race. Well, last time in the starting gate, he banged his head, and that's why he was stunned. So there's not really a problem. It's just that the gates opened when he was a bit stunned. That's all. Working well, he's doing everything what we expect him to do. I think he'll be spot on for the 2000. I have two runners in the 2000 guineas, uh, Picasso and Gardner. Uh, they seem to have worked well. I think they'll run a good race. Mr. Imtia Seth's horse, uh, who won the Bangalore Summer Derby. Pronto Pronto is a good horse. Speed 6 is another good horse. I think the track here will suit Speed 6. And after all that, Tipping Tim will give the edge to Picasso over Cardinal for the Casino Royal Indian 2000 Guineas Grade 1. Well, and that's it from this episode of the Fly Kingfisher winning post. That's all we have for you. Thanks as always for joining me. We will bring you the Casino Royal Indian 2000 Guineas next weekend. Till then, may the horse be with you. Goodbye and thanks for joining me. Fisher winning post is powered by the Serum Institute of India and Hirko Industries.